because it's a vector, you can also, or any other element that has any other vector or any other structure for that matter that's in any one of these components, you can reference the individual elements of them if you want to. For example, if we said, okay, I want the, the uh, elements that is that makes up the fourth component, but I only want the third element in it, you can do it like that. So we get the letter U, which is the third element, or we could say, uh, the let's look at two. Here's the second component. It doesn't it doesn't have a second element. That is, here's the element. This is the element of two. It's a vector, but it's only a one element vector. So what happens if we say I want to see the second element in two? It's in A because there's nothing there. If we say I want the third sublist, this is the third sublist. That's that's exactly what it returns. So you you can see, but note note again, and again I have to do a double take every time I do this. Single bracket, we get the component back, not just the vector. That always throws me. And perhaps the reason is because this is the the syntax for referencing an element in a vector. So just to avoid confusion, R, uh, the developers of R tried to make create the syntax in such a way that you could look at the output or look at the syntax and know exactly what you're, what you're doing. Perhaps to avoid the confusion with vectors, they use the single brackets when you're when you're subsetting or accessing to refer to the components, not the elements. I don't know, but it, it's a source of confusion for me always. Okay, so um, you get the idea. Now, just like any other structure, you can you can use names. You can all of the indexes, everything you create. Any element, any structure, you can you can access it using either an index, which is God given, I would say, given by R. It's automatically created by R, or you can give it a name. You have to give it the name. When you do that, when you give it a name, it prefers names. It won't show you the indexes anymore. You can still you can still use them to access part of it. But if you say, I want to see the expression of this and it has a name, it's just going to show you the name. It's not going to show you the index, even though it still works. Okay, for example, here we create a vector. Here's a simple example. A vector, and if we say right now, if we say what are the names in A, there aren't any. But if we use the names function, then that is a function, coupled with the assignment, now when we express A, it, it doesn't show us, it shows us the, uh, the names. It no longer shows us the first element of A. It shows us the, the names of A. And this, this looks like something other than a vector, but it's not. It's a named vector. If you let's do this again, if we if we recreate A, note if we execute this first statement again, it reallocates A all over. So if I say show me A now, it's not going to have names. When you express a vector that's not named, this is element number one, this is element number two, this is element number three. But when you express it, it just shows you the index for the very first one on that line. If it wraps around, it will show you the very first one on the next line and so forth. It doesn't show you all of them. But when you name it, it does. Okay, so if I name it with vectors only, it does. If you name rows and or columns in a matrix, it will show you the row names and column names in a, in a matrix. With a data frame, you must have both column names and row names. If you don't, it will give it column names and row names. And the, the column names are going to be numbers, but they're actually names. And the, I'm sorry, the, uh, the, the column names will be V1, V2, V3. And the row names will be numbers, 
but they are in the named attribute. It's it's confusing. It makes sense after you get used to it, but it it's consistent. Okay, let's look at another example. Okay, so here, so now we have A. Can't remember if I did that. A has names. Okay, so now A is a named vector. Now we're going to put that into a list. We're going to use my list. Let's see what my list looks like. I forget. Okay, my list was that four parter. And A is going to be the second one. Okay, and so what does that look like? Here it is. We have two lists. Here's the first list, all of this. It's a sublist now. Here's the first sublist, comprised of the original first list. Here's the second sublist. It's comprised of the named vector. And you see in the first sublist where we had more than one component, in the, in the list itself, they're all ones, but it retains the original positions of uh, the, the elements as a list. So you, you kind of get my, my drift here about, um, it's very precise actually. Okay, so, so we do that. So there's my list. That's what my list looks like. What happens if we say I want to see the first component Remember, a single bracket with a list is a component. It shows you the first sublist, because that is the first component. What if I say I want to see the second component? It shows you the second sublist, which is a named vector. What if I say I want to see this, which actually is the first element in the first sublist? Shows you just exactly that. What if I say um, the second element, I'm sorry, this is, uh, let's try this again. Okay, so this is the first element of the first sublist. This is the, uh, the second, this is the second sublist. This is the second element of the second sublist, which is just curly. If we change, we can change the names. Okay, so we're changing the name for the component in this case, not for any one of the elements to Stooges. And then we say, show me what that looks like. So now the second sublist is named Stooges. And we can reference, you can use the names to reference or access or subset. Um, individual parts. So we're saying the component is named Stooges, the element that I'm interested in is named Curly, and that has a value of 35. Okay, so here, okay, let's, let's start over. Here's my list two, where we have f uh, four elements, and they're all named the fourth one is uh, a four part, is a character vector with four elements. Okay, so we, we read that in, we uh, assign it, it's an assignment statement, and then we say show me it. And I like that, I like to see the run button. You can hit uh, control enter and that does the same thing, but I like to see it, okay. So that, that this is what it looks like. Na it's just like the other one, but it's named. We have names now. So if I say, what are the names? Shows them in a character format. If I say, I want to see the fourth component. Gives us the name of it and then the element that's in it. You can also call it by its name directly. But note it returns this. That is the name. That's the formal name. Name of the object, dollar sign, name of the component. Or you can just say, show me all of my dot list two, and it will show you the, uh, the names.
you know, except I missed a step because we wanted to change the names and you can't see that line. Let's, okay, so we're going to change the names here. Using the names argument, we're going to change them to these text strings. And now we're going to say, show me my list too. So it's the same list. All we've done is we've assigned new names to each of the components. So lists, you can do a lot with lists. And you probably get a sense for that. You can unlist them. You can unname them. Unlisting, all unnaming does is strips away the names and puts the indexes as the, uh, uh, the default expression. But unlisting them changes the structure. It tries to flatten it into a vector if it can. For example, here, so here's a list, three components, and note we have one is in the first component, two, three in the second component, four, five, six in the third. When you unlist that, it, it, it does this. It's just a vector with six elements. It's not a vector with one, two, three elements. It's a vector with six. So it just smashes all of these into one vector. Okay, let's look at let's look at when I say that all of these functions use lists. What do we mean? Well, here's some simple models, uh, some simple modeling statements. LM, if you don't know, LM is a linear. It's a linear regression or an ANOVA. It's an analysis of variance where x and y can be uh, y must be uh, uh, numerical, but x can be either numeric or categorical. And um, we're creating a data frame on the fly. And x, so we have x 1 through 5, y 1 through 5. And we're, if you regress y, y on x, it's a perfect fit, right? It should be. So we, we do that, and we put the results in lm, xm. Let's look at LMXM. And when we say, show me just that object, we see only this. We see all it returns is the formula that was called and the coefficients for the intercept and the slope. So note the slope of x is perfectly 1, as it should be, because there's, a, there's both of those lines, those, they, they lie on top of each other. Okay, so it's a perfect slope. It's a 45 degree upward sloping, and it should be. And here's the intercept. It's almost zero. It's as close to zero as it can be. Now, however, if we say, let's do something else. If we say, show me the structure of that. Structure is a better command to examine an object because it shows you all the detail. There's a lot more in that object than, we, than was expressed when we expressed it. This is all in that object. This is the result, the object that is output from the LM function, but it's an extremely simple model. We have 12 different elements of this object. We have the coefficients, which is all we saw when we expressed it. But we also have er anything that's reported with a regression. We have the residuals, we have the effects, we have rank, we have fitted values, we have, I, I don't even know what that is, assign, QR, anything that gets um, uh, estimated that gets output by uh, a linear estimate, a linear regression estimate is going to be in here. There's another way we can see the guts of lm.xy, which is the summary function. The summary function is generic and it, it makes the, it, it shows you the results in, a, in what I call, and I don't mean to offend anyone, a pretty, a pretty format. Okay, so let's do that. This is what you're used to seeing, no doubt. If you're an old SAS uh, uh, pusher, 
if you use say, any of those software, this is the form that they generally will report the, the results of a regression. Summary is generic. You can run summary on almost any type of object and you'll always, any type of estimated linear modeling object and you'll always get this. Okay, so we say, let's say, what is the class of this object that got output? Notice a unique class. It's not, it doesn't say it's a list, it says it's an LM. It also belongs to the list class. It inherits a list, but here's the immediate parent. It's LM. If we say, what's the mode? The mode is list. If we say, what's the structure? We did that. If we say, what are the names? The names are the names of those 12 components. Okay, so if we just want to see the coefficients, which are the first component, coefficient is the name of the first component in the list lm.xm, we can call it specifically like this. And you can do it anywhere in your program if you have lm.xm in your workspace. There's the the intercept and the slope. If we want to see the residuals only, we can do that. 